Hi everyone, I'm Eleanor Beinman. How are you doing today? It's the beginning of summer. Um, it's getting really hot and it's time maybe for me to make the video that I've been wanting to make for a while. Maybe to leave some of you with some interesting thoughts and maybe some new perspectives for the summer for when you're playing Bach. I get a lot of questions that have to do with the tempo choice. And now we know, of course, that Bach wrote a variety of different pieces with different textures, um, but very often there are these kind of very digital, uh, fast preludes that have a lot of 16th notes. And of course, people are tempted to play them very fast because it impresses other people. And I myself have been guilty of that. You know, my most popular videos are the ones when I play things very fast. However, to really experience and understand the music, it takes time to process it with our brains. So um, when choosing a tempo in Bach, it's really important to see how frequently the harmonies change because when they do change, it's really desirable, um, provided one understands that there is a change of harmony taking place. Of course, for that, you need to know your music theory and understand chords and modulations at least a little bit. So when that harmony change is taking place, it needs to be somehow process through the brain of whoever's playing, and that way it will somehow magically find its reflection in the ears of the listeners. So I'd like to use the B flat major prelude from the Well-Tempered Clavier to illustrate this point. And I chose this piece because the harmonies in this particular piece, to me, are very jazzy. And I love that aspect of Bach which sometimes doesn't really show when you listen to people play it, is his wonderful gifts for syncopation and for interesting harmonies. They're really way ahead of his time. So this prelude sounds like this. So the way I just played this prelude is pretty much playing all the notes pretty fast and it sounds really good. Bach himself said, all you need to do is play the right notes at the right time and the music will play itself. And he was right. It does sound good. However, there's a lot in this music that would be interesting to highlight and the harmonies in particular actually travel very fast. So now I'm going to play just the harmonies of this piece as they occur. Listen to this. So I try to play them as they occur. In the first measure, we have literally eight different chords. Or 
whereas toward the end, he uses really long stretches of harmonies as well as different figurations scale-wise going up and down. So if I were playing this piece, um, I would really be cognizant of the fact that there is not only the bass line, two measures, but also the top line. And these two lines are kind of in parallel and contrary motion at the same time. Now the next couple of measures are just arpeggios and scales going up and down. So these are measures three and four. Just one arpeggio and then a scale. And then arpeggio going down again. And a scale going up. Another arpeggio down. So here the harmony changes every half a measure. So two beats. So it begins to change a little more slowly than in the first two measures. Now we have. Beats twice, so he's kind of laying in wait there. Let's see what happens. And then here we start this really cool chromatic ascent. So the word ascent, A S C E N T, is very important here because whenever in Bach there is a long buildup going up, it implies an increase of energy. And of course, conversely, when we're tumbling down some scale, it's a decrease of energy. We're being pulled toward um, back to the earth to, uh, with gravity. So when things are coming down, it's okay to speed up a little bit. But when things are going up, if you're playing at the same tempo or if you're speeding up, you're actually going to miss the point, which is you're overcoming the pull of gravity and you're trying to rise up. So here. trying to really push up and then the right hand top voice right and all together with the repeated notes we have and then we finally arrive in F major so we're playing this very fast we have this curveball, which is a diminished chord. Where is this coming from? Well, from the mind of Bach, obviously, but we can't just whiz by that. We need to show it because it's such a surprise. So... Okay. And then he stops this motion of the incessant 32nd notes, which are very fast by nature, and he goes into these series of very declamatory chords and then wave-like runs that go up and down. G major seventh chord. Traveling up, 
So we can't just speed up. We have to show the tension increasing. We arrived in B flat, our home key. here in the uh, right hand also connotes that we really need to slow down and it says here that um, there was an indication of an adagio somewhere here which um, somebody chose not to put in the addition but if you understand the flux of this piece it's absolutely obvious that you need to slow down because he completely stops the tempo here in measures 13 measure 15 with these um, oh, he starts at measure 11 with these dotted notes and chords which come absolutely unexpected out of nowhere. So you can't just keep playing in the same tempo if nothing happened because the music is completely different. not quite a stretto, but two voices um, taking turn and leading up to this B flat seventh chord, which is actually a big surprise because one would think that after being in this F dominant chord, by the F seventh chord, which should be back to our tonic, and then he does the same thing as in measure 16, he plays around with the chord he's already holding. And then he goes into a C flat diminished chord, which is very unexpected after our dominant chord. Then he goes to E flat major, which is the uh, subdominant in the key of B flat, our home key. triumphant ascent to the B flat. So do take some time to look at the piece away from the piano and find the key changes if you can. You can mark them in pencil and really think about what's going on in the piece so that when you end up playing it, um, correspondingly as you play it, you understand what's going on and act accordingly and that will really fill up your time and make for a more interesting rendition and also really a much more fulfilling experience. So I really hope that this was helpful and we're doing all of this so that this guy is better understood and um, happy practicing. I hope your summer is going to be full of interesting discoveries in your favorite Bach pieces. Thanks for watching. Bye.